Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4 using Kaiser Reich in which we're playing as Japan. And for this campaign we're going to attempt to go down the path to get uh, the Showa Restoration. No guarantees of course, but uh, that's the uh, goal we're trying to achieve here for today and for the next foreseeable few days. But Amansetsu declares a record earnings. Japan has had a presence in Manchuria ever since the end of the Russo-Japanese War. And in the years since, our hold over the region has greatly strengthened. The negotiations at Shanghai in 1928 forced the world to recognize the right to a free hand in Manchuria, opening boundless opportunities for assistance under the Kwantung Army's watchful eye. Our control is not absolute, however, and Zhang Zulin's Fengxiang government is not always com cooperative. It is fortunate for him that our desire to safeguard a profitable peace in Manchuria remains paramount alongside our hope that his government will want to enact of as a vehicle for our greater Chinese ambitions for these reasons. The heart of our efforts in Manchuria is the South Manchuria Railway Company, or Mansetsu for short, which has become responsible for developing and exploiting vast swaths of the Manchurian economy, propelling the region to become Japan's primary source of coal and steel, as well as a producer of over half the world's oil or soybean supply. Today, Mansetsu has announced its highest profit to date. Manchuria is truly a cornucopia of opportunity. Fantastic. And I forgot to do all this stuff too earlier off screen. Whoopsie. Oh well. You can lead them. You have a tank. Which, uh. Well, we don't have a lot of tank stuff here, so. Mmm. Mm, drug user. Nice. It's politically connected, but whatever. Uh, infantry. Here you go. And the vast majority of the infantry here, too. Uh. What are you guys? Taiwan group. It's fine. Yeah. So, in the meantime, we gotta talk about revised imperial uh, defense policy. Jonuniku Kyoshoku, or Survival of the Fittest, is a fundamental understanding in our military philosophy. The Western imperialists have greatly expanded their air force and navies, and if we do not do the same, we will surely fall victim to their forces. The nationalism in the armies remain in so our armed forces have been able, able to reach their full potential, so deciding on reductions is of the utmost importance. Dissolution of the Diet. The four year term of the incumbent imperial diet elected in 1932 is ending as Prime Minister Inu Inukai. So Yoshi has called for a general election to happen as soon as possible. Very, very well. We have the National Security Act, huh? Cool. So what's next? The Long War Doctrine versus Short War Doctrine. I kind of want to do the Short War. Land Doctrine costs. Land Doctrine costs military factory. More war sport. Allows for specific bonuses against specific countries for a short duration of time. Powerful buffs once specific goals have been achieved. I don't know. I've never done this before, so start the third cycle. Third circle plan. Ooh, we also have a thing of coffee here, too. Yummy. Let's do short war doctrine. Uh, this seems more dangerous, but I want to try it. Pointing to Japan's weak industrial base, lack of resources, and position in Asia, advocates of a short war strategy believe that Japan should instead prepare to fight a short, decisive conflict in the style of the Russo Japanese and the Sino Japanese wars before us, and to this end, create a large standing army capable of inflicting devastating defeats early in the war. I like that. Start the third circle plan. Oh, hello. Who's Viktor Chernov? Oh. Huh. As we can't fight a prolonged war with the enemy, our only option is to continue with current naval buildup and focus on an ultimate victory in the decisive battle. Home run on the home isles. Ever since its introduction to Japan a few decades ago, baseball has grown to be one of the most popular sports across the entire country, despite this until recently. The sport has generally been regarded as a primary casual game that people play in their free time or as part of the school's curriculum. All this began to change a few years ago when the media mogul Shoriki Matsutaro organized a team of Japan's best players to compete uh, against America's finest including the Babe Ruth and the Jimmy Fox. Taking part in a tour spanning 12 cities across the nation, the concept of a professional baseball team quickly managed to grip the nation. As I new today of the formation of Japan's first professional baseball league, the Japan Occupational Baseball League. Made up of seven teams including the Tokyo Giants, formed from the team who competed in the prior tour, a debut season split into three parts is expected to begin in the next few weeks. With such high public demand for professional games and of course significant advertising support from Shoriki's newspaper, this new league is expected to be a resounding success that will entertain the nation for years to come. Give it a few years and we'll be beating the Yankees with ease. And eventually, as expected, the black money reaches our shores. The domino effect of the economic failure in the German Empire has reached our shores. While we're not as effective as our neighbors in the region due to our quite grand economic isolation from the German markets, well, we're still touched by it. As I bought through our banks, we'll have a hard time for a few months. It's to be expected, a mission from Norway as well. We recently received a trade delegation from the Kingdom of Norway. The country seeks new trading partners as not part of the German Reich's pact that dominates trade on the European mainland. They seek to trade, among other things, dried fish and have offered us very favorable rates on Norwegian uh, merchant shipping. As most of our trade experts are in favor of accepting, while a few others oppose the use of foreign shipping and moving Japanese goods. Heck yeah. Trigger and civilian Tianjin. With the world on throws of Black Monday, China, by extension of the men, has begun badly hit with it, the Chinese within the city suffering terribly. Tensions are reaching a boiling point, and giving our, by giving our operatives in the China Agency the green light, we can gain a prerogative to gain a foothold in Tianjin. General elections. 
After the rest, constitutional restoration of 1926 and the ensuing political re realignment, two parties came to dominate Japanese politics, the conservative Riken Sayukai and the liberal Riken Minsekto. The Sai Yukai won an absolute majority in the 1932 general election, but support on the countryside has been declining as the political atmosphere turns against the ruling party, the Min Saito, formerly known as the Ken Sai Kai, has consolidated its urban voting base and is beginning to expand to the countryside, hoping to break the Sai Kyukai's absolute majority of the diet. Our third new player in 1936 election, and this is the Shakai Sai Shuto, founded in 1933 by Social Democrats and Trade Unionists. Now it's time to see if the Sai Yukai has retained enough seats to retain an absolute majority. I've lost it up to majority. Uh, well, we're gonna have to have the next this one security debate. I do undo this one, so it's failed to pass. It's failed to coup. I don't know which one. I like the political power. It's gonna hurt a political power game, but let's see what happens. The more instability we have, the better. Chen sides with Peng Chong. The collapse of Sun Chiang Fen's League of Eight Provinces has caused great disarray in China, with the region quickly slipping into all at war. It seems that Chen Tiao Yuan, the head of the Anqing clique, has been forced to look beyond Beijing for help. His decision to recognize Feng Chan as the legitimate governor of China signals a major blow towards the Germans and the Qing laptops. By allying with Zhang Zulim, Chen Tiao Yuan has become our ally. Um, yet Chen's anti concession stance uh, stands a major barrier to cooperation and brings the question's usefulness as a proxy for Japanese interests. Nevertheless, discreet support from Chen will weaken our enemies and strengthen our allies, a worthwhile goal. So here's Zhang Zongcheng, is in Puyi from the Qing government. Chen, um, well, we don't like any of these guys, really. I guess this Chen we like, but this is Chen Tiaoyong, and they're a puppet of Nanjing clique. All right, yeah. Yeah, credibility of Chen Tiaoyuan. Yeah, we will watch with interest. Hmm. I think Sam is single division. And some maybe some planes. But I think they have an air base, so. And if we show up, we're just pretty much there for the army XP. So why well, send you a horse guy? That might be for the best. Because the infantry are actually halfway decent. They actually can hold their own, they're twenty four combat, they're actually freaking huge. Maybe as much as I want a horse. We'll send you an infantry division. If they accept us, that is. Nope, they didn't think they'd have planes. It's alright. Here for XP. Short word doctrine, followed up with probably all this stuff. It'd be good to get done too. Ah, the assassination of Katayama-sen. Born in 1859, Katayama-sen was one of the most senior syndicalists in Japan, known as the father of Japanese syndicalism. Exiled out of the U.S. after participating in the early social democratic movement, Katayama witnessed and was influenced by Jack Reed's syndicalist activities and development of the IWW into the CSA. Katayama returned to Japan after the constitutional restoration of 1926 and founded the first legal syndicalist party in Japan, the Rodo Nomino, Nomento. And after it was declared illegal in 1932, he found the current Shakai Taishuto. Yesterday, while visiting Kyoto to congratulate Shakai Taishuto member Yamamoto Senji on his election, he gained a three right wing leaders stormed into his office and beat the two men with his clubs. Yamamoto survived, but Katayama, age 76, never regained consciousness and died earlier today. This would be bad, but Shanghai refuses. Terrible news came out of Shanghai. The International Council has refused to give us a green light to further expand military operations. This is a major blow to our plans to take over Tianjin and we'll have to wait for the China agency to orchestrate more attacks before we can make our demands again. Darn it. That sucks. And you'll be led by this guy. And led by this guy. How about you don't give up your all of your uh, border to the enemy? Are you stupid? Whatever happens, happens, I guess, you know? Short word option. Now let's start. Let's get through this one. And we're thinking of that. What we do is not really terribly bad. Get that experience, boy. Hey, at least they made it in circumvent, though. And after that, what do we want? Logistics core. Ooh, logistics comes gets even better. That's nice. Division speed and experience gain is pretty good too. A great intelligence agency. Let's do new field manuals. Cost of war planning against decisions is increased by 30. Army speed gain. Uh, so we have divisions in the field. I want them to get experience now. Unless we have dockyards or something here. 
Here we get build the stock dots. Can't buy tie, huh? Our current field minnows simply don't match up to the rapidly evolving standards of one war, so updating them to maintain our operational efficiency is a necessity. I like that one. I like it a lot. Nice. Go here. Fam bricks on siege one, not our problem. You go right here too. Give me an infantry leader, is very good. Get up on Schlaga. Schlag it up. Nice. And you know what? We're gonna go over here first. Let's help us take these guys out. Because AI obviously cannot. Good. 0.77 of the day is not bad. Republican Revolution in Iran. Legation city is voting bailout. Black money is left deep cause in the global economy. Particularly in the Deutsche Asiatische Bank in Shanghai, which seems to have fallen victim to unscrupulous business practices and possibly insider trading. Our delegation is now seeking guidance on how they should vote concerning the proposed bailout of the DAB. Approve the motion, deny. That seems like, uh. We should deny it. Oh. Imperial Japanese forces. The two empires of our nation, since the Meiji Restoration, the Imperial Japanese Army and the Navy have transformed themselves into powerful fighting forces capable of not only defending Japan, Japanese interests on the Asian continent, but for triumphing over foes superior in resource and population through a combination of sheer force of will and brilliant leadership. Yet in the new and changing environment of the post-Great World War, world, the future of both services has been fiercely debated. The army split between those who wish to prepare the nation for a prolonged total war versus those who wish to ensure Japan can end any war and enter into a series of quick decisive battles. And the Navy can more closely scrutinize the strategy in light of a changing American situation. It's a matter further complicated by an especially severe inter-service rivalry, encouraging the two services to prepare for different wars to earn greater amounts of funding and hampering the establishment of a single unified national defense strategy. No matter what may happen, however, the military must be made ready for war. Talk in China, huh? War planning in China. Strike against these guys. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Expand tungsten mines in Korea. Begin expanding our tungsten ore uh, deposits in Yangxiao. And it'll take some time and effort to expand our mines there. So have a Southeast Asia. Ooh, Southeast Asia. Strike against the Kingdom of Siam. Can we just go to war immediately? I wouldn't want to go to war immediately. We possibly could. That, that sounds like fun. Can help beat the crap out of them. That's our circle plan. We're there, we should do it as fast as we possibly can. The ships here. Nice. Now there are two divisions there, which is not ideal for us, but what do we got here? I would like to get to further mobilization, but it's her political power game. But at the same time, I still want some army speed. Speed, recovery, or oh wow, genius, much drastic, drastic recovery. I want that guy. Good, now hang out real quick. Failed coup in Beijing, oh no, what passes, whatever, who cares. We're gonna circle and destroy all these guys up here. Friction within the, the Japanese left. The shock of the assassination of Katayama Sen initially united the Shakai Tai Shuto in solidarity against the white terror, but this unity did not last long, apparently. <clears throat> the party was originally structured as a coalition of various social democratic and syndicalist organizations united only by the goal of socialization of the economic structure of the proletariat at its foundation. Before his death, Katayama steered the party away from ideological clashes, but deprived of his voice, the party's forced to confront. The question of its precise ideological position and infighting soon began. Throughout the spring of 1936, the national syndicalist Nichi uh, Rokai embraced totalism and vigorously expanded his membership not only from within the party at the expense of the moderate Shamin. Shaman Kai, but also from without, notably from the Shaman Kai control Nihon Rodo Sodomai. An open struggle between the two groups soon broke out. The Nichiroki accused the Sodomai of being run by the labor bureaucrat establishment, and the Sodomai, the Shanin Kai, uh, in turn accused the Nichiroki of hijacking labor organizations and turning them into their puppets. Nichiroki members were expelled from both the Sodomai and the Taishuto earlier this month, and the group is now operating independently. Legation Council of Wotan providing aid to Sichuan Province, the southern Chinese province in Sichuan is currently experiencing a terrible famine and is struggling to save its people. They requested the Legation Council authorize legation cities to help them open up new sources of grain until the land can recover. Many experts on Chinese politics, however, warned the Jap that the money we sent for famine relief could just go directly into Sichuan warlords' pockets. We shall abstain. Can I see any more volunteers yet? No, darn it. Do we have the airbase? The May 15th incident. Oh boy. The Prime Minister has been, of course, been assassinated. How fantastic. A group of 11 radical junior Navy officers connected to the Nichiroki broke into the official residence of the Prime Minister <clears throat> uh, in Nukai and shot him dead. They claimed to have done to avenge the death of Katayama Sen and the murder of some workers in Nigita. The incident has greatly shocked the nation 
and Admiralty Boar, mortified by the incident, has already begun a court martial and a thorough investigation of radical activities within the Navy. Appoint Suzuki Akisabiro to replace Inukai. Oh, 17 days. Oh, I don't want to lose that yet, so. So, with that happening, I can go over here. National Security Act. A debate in the diary regarding the National Security Act has been raging for the past few weeks, and it's time for us to decide which course our nation will take. Some conservative members of the diary fear that if an act hasn't passed, we're not elements of society will try to seize power. The future of Japan is in our hands. As it usually is. You know. Oh, is that a. No, that's you. You're right there. You're doing alright. Hey, another division. Nice. Collapse of the UBD. It's fine. It's not us. I don't care. Basic modern tools. I'll put immediately. Getting here would be nice. Uh, we might push here, though. Man, there's two divisions, though. No, let's move over here. Can you actually win here? No. Well, that's the case here. You can save one single division by doing that security debate. The atmosphere in the period has become increasingly tense in recent months <clears throat> and has now reached a frightening level. Many members fear for their lives, so progress isn't just a matter of political power or personal pride, but of survival. There's a growing consensus that the security, current security laws aren't enough to protect democracy, and more is needed. The May 15th incident must now not be allowed to happen again. Oh, and they were annexed. Well, god dang it. Oh, well, we tried. The infamous Peace Preservation Act was introduced in early 1924 by the Tanaka regime in the midst of the Red Scare following the Kanto anarchist uprising in September of 1923 and a cynical assassination attempt on the then Crown Prince Hirohito in the December of that year. The act drastically curtailed civil rights and symbolized the draconian rule of General Tanaka. It was repealed when the regime was brought down with the Constitutional Restoration in 1926, but Prime Minister Suzuki Kizaburo now wants to reintroduce it, or rather a slightly reworked version of it, under the name National Security Act. It's faced strong opposition, even from his own cabinet, and public opinion sunk to a new low. But Suzuki believes its reintroduction is a necessary step to counter the rising tide of radicalism. He's not alone in his view. A cross party parliamentary group led by Nakajima Chikohei of the Saiyukai and the Dachi Kenzo of the Nain Saito has declared the act to be the last bulwark of constitutional government in support of its passage. The House of Peers and the Privy Council are also in favor of the act. We must defend democracy by any means necessary, the act will be enforced. We're going to a good conscience to go, up, go against public opinion. Oh, we lose so much political power! No! 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 Oh, come on. You know what? I'm gonna let it ride out. I'm gonna go to early mob then. Screw it. We could do a police correcting, which I do like for the weekly stability. But, <clears throat> still. Stability. But we can use more factors. How many are we losing to consumer good traffic current? 42%. Uh, 35 would drop it by 5%, which isn't very much, but helps us produce factories even faster. So we're gonna go with that. There you go. And next, spend the standing army. Strike against it, 120 days. Battle for production, morale, intelligence, develop, development tactics. Well, it's good to have that one, just in case you need it immediately. Naval doctrine. Quality shipbuilding, revives Kantai Kessen. Mm. Infantry attack and defense, that's pretty good. Armored experiments, I don't want to do armored experience for this campaign. This would be good stuff to do too. Phase of the Arasakas. Our bread and butter rifle, the Arasaka, has been reliably used rifle in the past several decades, but has fallen behind the latest advancements in warfare in part due to bold action design. Therefore, we must upgrade their weaponry to be more powerful, efficient, and semi automatic rifles. Doing so will ensure their infantry stands the test of time, can trap even the most advanced militaries of the West. Agile and indomitable. Our infantry is nothing without the diversity of shells fired by the trustworthy howitzers. Therefore, we must not slow down their advance with a massive cannon that is difficult to transport and a hindrance to operate. By designing a light, robust cannon while also maintaining the ability to load a powerful and destructive shell, our infantry will be absolved of any further issues in breaking enemy lines. Alright, so we do have options here now. Uh, the Philippines, who are they guaranteed by? Is America? Yeah, they're American puppet. Darn it. Um, how about Siam? Could we potentially invade Siam? I wouldn't mind invading parts of China, like, literally right now. Paying Xiong government. Hmm. Is there anyone else around here that we could do that to? Transmir? No. I do want to do Siam. 
coup d'état. Oh! Oh, there you go. Same weapons to our allies, huh? <clears throat> Government under fire. Unsurprisingly, the failure to pass the National Security Act has led to a backlash against the Prime Minister. The conservatives and bureaucrats who supported the bill feel betrayed by Suzuki's backing down. The House of Peers and the Privy Council, disappointed by the government's inability to take deal with the recent wave of radicalism, has lost all the patience with the cabinet. Suzuki's days are numbered, as they should be. Um, let me make sure our planes are good. Anything here we really need immediately? Not too much. Um, some radio. What we got here? Medium tanks, medium tanks. Light tanks, heavy tanks. Uh, we're going to take this one first since we are going to be using these tanks initially. Improved light tank chassis. I mean, it's probably okay. Makeshift armor is not worth it. Cast armor. Main armaments. Oh. There you go. We need to be a little faster than this, though. 15. Looking alright. I'm okay with that. Or mediums? No. No. Oh, this is not worth it. There you go. There you go. Definitely not. Infantry weapons is either soft attack. Destruction. Resignation of Suzuki Kizabiro. Uh, abandoned by everyone. Uh, the humiliated Prime Minister Suzuki resigned when the peers supported a or passed a censure motion to denounce in the cabinet with lukewarm support. Former Home Minister Minuzo Rantaro was appointed in his place, ominously. A Privy Council. And as ultra-conservative chairman Baron Hranuma issued a statement declaring that the parliamentary impotency needs to be replaced by a more stable system. Call the emergency convention. Oh, up to the bar. Nice. I like it. Bandit form, huh? Well, we'll keep going. Restorationist and centralist. The current political instability and the ineptitude of the political establishment have rekindled or flames the restorationist cause. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Hashimoto's ever secretive uh, Sakurakai has been the historical hotbed of anti establishment thought in the military. The recent years have seen a surge in the membership of the General Arakai's Kodoha. Kodoha. Kodoha, yeah. The Kodoha, or the Imperial Way faction, has gained much momentum through their organizational efforts of the radical junior officers, who have openly shared their beliefs in anti capitalism, anti oligarchism, and anti parliamentarianism. Usually from underprivileged or humble backgrounds, many of these officers have experienced poverty from childhood and have observed that they see as the evil influences of favoritism, which fits their view that the establishment has seized power from the Emperor and is leading the nation to the abyss. The restoration solution is simple to sweep out the ruling establishment and restore all power to the Emperor and from there initiate a complete national reform. They're opposed by a loose coalition of more moderate army officers, who they derisively call the Tosai Ha, or the control faction, but even these so called moderates are reaching a breaking point. The greatest opposition to the Code Doha comes from a group of officers who are close to the central military leadership who, while supporting cooperation with the establishment, have come to believe the need for remilitarization of the politics. There will be trouble. Yay! Hey, we'll see what happens though. Nothing bad can happen, right? We're just trying to reestablish ourselves, be a strong little military, you know, strong nation. We really hate these guys. Um. Peasant Revolt. Honestly, it really doesn't matter to me. Mm. Drug use. Well, at least I need volunteers too. And you do have an airbase as well. Can we send you planes? Maybe not. Probably not. Let's see what happens. We want that XP. We have no political power, which really sucks. God dang, does this suck. Supremacy Logistics. Advancements in logistic equipment and training is a necessity to maintain a large armed force across multiple fronts in East Asia. We'll be needlessly throwing away brave Japanese souls if our companies are not equipped with the most up-to-date support equipment. Our Marines will need the latest advancement in medical technology, logistics training, and as well as reconnaissance support to ensure that each invasion results in a triumph for Japan. Absolutely. Nice. Elections of Minuzo Rentaro. God, I want to I want this person here. Mm. The resignation of Suzuki is son the Rikin Sayukai and 
uh, an emergency convention was called. The bureaucratic Tono Nami faction, named after uh, Tono Nami Takejiro, chairman of the pro Tanaka Sayu Honto during the Tanaka dictatorship and then his aftermath, has been crippled by the loss of its leader, leaving the reactionary Nakajima faction to take control of the party. From his new post as Director of General Affairs, Nakajima enjoys decision making power over the entire party. Although he stopped short of crowning himself chairman and instead appointed current Prime Minister and Toko Nami aligned Mizuno Orentaro. Finally, some stability in politics. Nice, that's good. That's looking nice. Helping lead the way against these guys, good. Become a trickster as well, it's very good. Kai Tyson and Nan Shoru. The 1936 Olympic Games had come and gone, and we have a reason to be proud. Our athletes have won us nine medals setting. Uh, oh god. Uh, a new national record. And some yet of our record has been problematic. The athletes Kai Tyson and Nan Shoru, or as they prefer to be called, the Song Ki Chung and Nam Song Yong, did well in the marathon race, the former even winning in first place, but overall they failed to show enthusiasm proper for subjects of the Emperor. Between dropping their heads during the national anthem, hiding the flag in their chest, and insisting on being called Korean over Japanese, many of them in the country have been ashamed of their behavior in contrast to the popular attitude within Chaozin, largely supportive of their actions. As a result, the athletes have been banned by the central government from participation in future events as well as placed under surveillance. It would be a shame if their victory was used to promote instability within the empire. The Foreign Office has attempted to ensure that sympathy abroad remains minimal by lodging a complaint with the Irish government and an International Olympic Committee over perceived lack of care towards ensuring that our athletes properly represent the empire. They have not yet responded. How unfortunate. Japan's longest summer. The Japanese government has found itself uh, effectively paralyzed. The downfall of two successive Sayukai prime ministers has severely weakened <clears throat> uh, the power of the new prime minister, and Haranomu's open scheme to destroy the parliamentary system has only exacerbated the political turmoil. Um, extremist groups are growing by the day, and the military has become increasingly frustrated. Several high ranking officers within the army have hatched a plot to overthrow the civilian administration and save the empire. The conspirators have approached army minister Hayashi Senjuro for support. The future of Japan lies in his choice. Nice. Let's win it big. Japan's longest day. After 10 years of political disagreements and disgrace, the armies have seized power again. This time in a coup d'etat. Parliamentary impotency has indeed been replaced by the more stable system. The ultra conservative Baron Horanumo uh, Kichiro has uh, played his hand well, and he's not Prime Minister, and the state of martial law has been declared throughout all the greater Japanese Empire. Banzai! Fantastic. So it has to be passed, not passed. So then, that, as much as we want, like to do this one. Oh, this is long. Oh, you have to do long war doctrine for this one. Oh, back one of the army. Nice. Infantry are the foundation of the modern army. And if our infantry were to falter in the face of our adversaries, then there would be no hope for our planned conquest over Asia. Instead, we must bolster our forces, equip each man with not only the best equipment we have to offer, but also instill them the courage to destroy Japanese enemies. Who are we to call ourselves the hegemon of East Asia without an elite ground force to back up our claims? So we're getting really close there. That's good. Um. Strength of the IJAAS. Plans have long been stopped being just reconnaissance and harassment tools. By integrating them fully into our operations, army operations, the Air Force is capable of dealing with damage and uh, advancing our operations as much as the average army command. Yes, sir. You can help out there. A new power struggle begins. The coup is carried out by a broad coalition of units, but few did so with uh, the enthusiasm of the quota junior officers and their associates. <clears throat> Indeed, they were happy enough to do their utmost to overthrow the ever inept um, elected government, seeing the parliamentary system for what it was a plutocratic capitalist institution. But let us change another new government. Hironama and his ilk, uh, Toseha, are controlling frauds and gleefully taking their leading roles in the new regime. And Kodo has been silent for the radicalism, so the junior officers have concluded that they, and Japan as a whole, have been betrayed once again. The establishment has seized power from the emperor and is leading the nation to a different kind of abyss. A new power struggle is beginning. Will this ever end? Probably not. We actually Congress. Ooh. Nice. The Asia Express runs from Port Arthur to Harbin. For the first time on Setsu's Asia Express Streamline trip or train, will be running from the tip of Port Arthur uh, to uh, the northern city of Harbin at an astonishing 130 kilometers per hour, putting it among the fastest trains in the world. The journey took a mere 21 hours and 30 minutes. The locomotive wonder bears cars uh, outfitted with heat, air conditioning, and luxurious lounges for even third-class customers, as well as its very own signature cocktail served at the bar. Well, Mansetsu's unmitigated success has given reason for some to cheer. And may strike envy in Beijing, others can only view Mansetsu's advancements with a growing concern, not in all material are properly appreciative of Japanese attempts to help develop their nation. And a few have even uh, openly protested what they call a blatant act of colonialism. Still, the launch of the line is a powerful testament of Japan's efforts to bring modernity to both Feng Shan and all of Asia as a whole, regardless of what some dissenters may think. Three cheers to co-prosperity and the Kodo Kanaku. Earlier today, Kodo Hall junior officers from the units in Tokyo area 
of stage a new coup d'etat. Earlier this morning, 1,400 officers and enlisted soldiers set out to take control of key communications and administrative facilities, the Army Ministry, the General Staff Office, the Metropolitan Police Headquarters, the Prime Minister's official residence, and the Imperial Dive Building were all quickly taken, and the Imperial Palace went under siege. In the afternoon, the Emperor himself addressed his soldiers and announced his official support for the revolution. To ensure proper governance this time, General Araki has come recommended Prince Kondo Fulminaro for the position of the Prime Minister. Kondo uh, has connections with the various intellectuals, publicists, and other notables who are sympathetic to the restorationist cause, and is expected to find a way to create a Japan that's more in line with the Kondo views. The coup is successful. The Shoa Restoration. Uh, reports from Tokyo for the past few weeks have been scarce, but new now few can doubt that Japanese democracy is dead. Following the failure of the government to crack down the nation's nascent and syndicalist movement, conservative officers conducted a coup d'etat, housing the prime minister and establishing a military dictatorship. But even this has proven temporary. Officers aligned with the rival restoration faction have launched a counter coup. As the streets of Asia's greatest city run red with blood, they have announced a show of restoration, a restoration of ultimate power to the emperor, and the birth of a Japan free from the corrupting influences of syndicalism, democracy, and Western influence. So no tokan. Show of restoration. With his majesty officially sanctioning the coup, the restoration was a success, however. The groundwork is yet to be truly laid. Taking power is one thing, but governance is another. The restorationist factions are already bickering to ease attentions. Premier Kono will ensure that the restorationist cause should be a unifying one for all of Japan. The first convention of the Taisei Yokosankai. A Taisei Yokosankai, or Imperial Rural so Assistance Society, God, they keep attacking, will represent every aspect of society, unlike the old plutocratic imperial diet. <clears throat> It will branch out into every administrative level from hamlet to prefecture, and create a more core group consisting of talented individuals from academic, cultural, economic, governmental, military, political, and all other professional occupations in theory by penetrating to the grassroots level. A direct link between politics and the people will be established by having every important interest group represented at its core. It would be possible to coordinate and develop effective national policies. And that is, in theory, at first the convention, the three main blocks have emerged, and the center is Kokumin, Saishin, Soldain, Undo, or Saido for short. Headed by none other than Prince Kono himself and composed of reform minded intellectuals and politicians, many of their proposed reforms were first outlined by the Shoah Ken Kyokai, a political workshop founded at the behest of Konoi. An offshoot of the workshop, the Shoah Dojin Kai has become the de facto public relations arm of the new government, and ensuring that it achieves its goal of attracting the brightest and most influential minds in Japan. An outside of the arrangement is a Kodoha, General Araki's clique of reserve and active restoration military leaders. It is. They who brought the new regime to power through the counter coup and who are now left at the sidelines. Special care must be taken to keep them happy. Many question Kono's, uh, Konoi's uh, forceful agenda, and even question the purpose of the Taisai Yoko Sankai. Konoi designed the Yo Taisai Yoko Sankai as a central nervous system for the upcoming new system, combining all legislative, executive, and administrative powers into one. Konoi ensured that the old Maiji constitution would remain in place, and that the Taisai Yoko, Yoko, uh, Yoko Sankai would not replace the imperial diet, but the very idea of the political Leviathan has met with fierce opposition. This will be the foundation of a new nation. Fantastic. that very good uh, screens carrier cruiser ships screens carriers Let more fuel usage more range max speed more range for now maybe we'll see uh, in the meantime we got more ships made yes we need more capital ships too but we do have 50 more command power so we did do these guys over here oh we have to wait to do these guys too republicans win elections we have no fuel what else is new um, Show of restoration. Kono Fulminaro secures support. After a 15 day long convention, uh, the Prince Kono has successfully advanced his agenda and secured support in the Taisei Yoko Sankai. Now, as Premier, the Prince Kono seeks to implement his reformist vision but at the same time come to the common understanding with all those opposing him in the restoration his cause. This may be a more difficult task than expected, and the institution of the Taisei Yoko Sankai has come under fire from the most outspoken in the Kohoda. Nonetheless, Konoi recognizes that he'll have to make concessions in order to stay in power, walking a tightrope of politics so that the entire structure won't come crashing down. Let us work together for the sake of Japan. Daily political power gain, get political power, more stability, which is great. So we can prioritize one faction to get some specific buffs, like so supporting just a Dojin Kai in the left gives us more political power, which I would like. But if we don't, we, you know, we'd be more balanced and stable. Impending uh, Shin Taisei. Political power, uh, political advisor cost goes down. Upgrade your second command. Replace imperial prince with a man with a thousand friends. Destroy degenerative individualism. Temporarily appease the other factions of the government. Allowing us to pass one reform focused about curing any politics. Eliminate party politics. I like that. Work through the Dojin Kai. Interesting. Appease the Kohoda. Forget the political power. Colonial industry. Ooh. Revere imperial power. Cabinet. Metro factory construction speed mobilize a nation. 
Ooh, that's very good too. Independence and self-sufficiency is very good. Uh, well, it's pretty good overall. It's not perfect. All right, every course day with the last three infrastructure gets in one. Oh, well, we're gonna probably start on this side maybe. Work with the work through the Dojin Kai. A political movement cannot live on words alone. Then ensure that ours do not end up as an ineffectual flash in the pan. We need to make it clear to the businessmen, bureaucrats, and other career politicians who keep the country running that there's a place at the table for them. Thankfully, the Showa Dojin Kai has been doing exactly that. So we'll do that one. And I like to do that one next, we'll see. So right now, where are we at? So we have all these guys. We have Hirohito. Narrow gauge railways. Japan's railways were built using an unusually narrow gauge inherited from the British Empire during the Meiji era. While it does make construction easier in Japan's mountainous terrains, the speed limitations have negatively impacted our industry. Experts argue over whether conversion is worth the government's time. Rapid landlordism. Land use in Japan is highly inefficient. Much of the farmland is owned by the landlords who rent it out to the tenant farmers at exorbitant rates. This leads to a stagnant social system, which has contributed to both the political polarization of the countryside and to the mass migration of tenant farmers to the cities in search of better fortunes. Which makes sense, you know, it only makes sense if you do stuff like that. I knew they'd attack us here. Uh, man. We can't really do much here, can we? Jack Reed, oh god. No, our guys are defeated. One country, one party. The Dojin Kai is asserting its dominance will upset the balance in the coalition. Ooh, weekly, st weekly stability goes down, no thanks. Eliminate party politics. Well, I believe in the unity of the thought and action, not the endless decisive bickering that has brought us ruin. The economy may grow and stay prosperous, but it will be nothing if the nation dies, and while the restoration's cause can nurture it back to life. In the nation. Which, which would be good to do it later if we... Well, it's good to do it now. I'll do it now anyways. Oh, what happened? Are we at war? Did our division die? Did we get overran? Really? Did we seriously get overrun? Holy crap. We must have gotten overran. Wow. Well, oh well. Things happen. So what happens when you try to do stuff here? Spanish Civil War, very nice. I just want to send close air support, man. Totalists. By the time we get to the front lines, it'll probably be all over. Piece of Kohoda. Though it's not easy to reconcile the heartland views of the Kohoda with the reality of running a country, we must not forget that it was them who have put the regime in power. Only fool bites a hand that feeds them. Yeah, as soon as we got there, it was over. Stefan Kamal uses power. It's almost time for that. Do you ever use this bomb piercing locks? Let me know in the comments below. Do you ever use that? But right now, electric bones would be good. Anything for guns? Yeah, we can use stuff for guns here. So I want to get rid of the Japanese influence here because we hate them, and or the German influence, Japanese influence, German influence here. Uh, it'd be easy for us to get rid of them there if we support Indochina right now. So that's my reasoning right now. You guys are not fantastic, but there's enough crap down here that we I'm going to send Marines down here. Do you have an air base? Yes, you do. Can I send you any planes? God dang it! I don't understand why we can't send planes. That makes no sense to me, man. Click is killing itself, very nice. Could send in the army. That would be bad, but I, I just want to get army morale. Nice. Alright. Um, engineer, Fortress Buster, Career. Not bad. Is there one better we could get? No, it does not really look like it. Engineer, trickster. I just don't like these guys. 
but it's really connected. Screw it. Uh, go with this. We can go to Spain too, but I don't really feel like it. We're good here. Sitting there, yeah. Tim to Kuhn Transmir. News about the anti Kolchak Kuhn Transmir has recently reached us. Fears that the rebels sought to kill Alexander Kolchak are de facto puppet leader of the Vladivostok regime. But the best efforts seem to have come to nothing. With a push crushed by the loyal scar, still, Kolchak has made a number of enemies in Transmir, and his vulnerability has become increasingly clear. Rather should demand that Kolchak resign and assign a new, more pliable leader for the Transmir and replace him. He may be loose cannon, but he's already loose cannon. If he dies and leaves, you know what? Just leave him there for now. It's okay. Nationalist coup. Oh, that is so not good for us. Can you guys do anything here? No, that's what I thought. Not as much. Peace, Koho Del. Now this one. One country, one party. There's nothing more petty than provincial party politics. It would be much more efficient if we had a system in which all former political parties and their members were absorbed in the Tai Sei Yo Kai. Even the most remote villages, of course. We're here to learn. Nice. Fourth Balkan War, very good. Socialists, whatever. Down there. <sighs> Supplies, a giant issue all over the place. They did very well. They were very smart doing what they did. Can you get to Dalat then, maybe? Two divisions is too much. Yep, I'm not here. Land of the Rising Scrum. The status of the imperial family leaving them often beyond reproach, political disputes between its members and government are rare usually, although not entirely unheard of. The recent dispute has arisen between the Chin Prince Chichibu, the younger brother of the emperor, and multiple members of the government even more unusual is how mundane the subject matter is compared to the usual backroom politicking. While the prince is widely renowned for support and promotion of the wide growth of a wide variety of sports in Japan, the one that he's taking to shine the most is the British sport of rugby. Having been introduced to the sport by Kayama Shigoro, former president of Japan's rugby union and coach of the national team, the prince Chichibu has become the face of Japanese rugby both at home and across the seas. With the prince's help, the sport has managed to spread across Japan, with many teams from the nation having begun to even compete internationally against those in Britain's Commonwealth. It is here where the dispute has arisen. As my, some of the more hardline traditionals within the government have started to see the growth of this foreign sport as the birth of a cancer that shall develop our national identity. Though pushing to have its support for rugby suppressed in favor of more traditional sports and to rebrand rugby to the proper Japanese name, they have placed themselves in a headfirst coalition course with the prince and his activism. With the prince having already issued an objection to these potential policies, it seems that making an official decision on how to proceed is unavoidable. Japanese culture isn't going to be destroyed by a simple ball game. Tradition is important. Perhaps the prince shall preserve a commodity instead. Yeah. Give us a day here. I want this guy here. Then again, I do want more political power too. Do we have any more for political power? Daily, ooh, daily national popular support. That'll give us actually more political power in the end too. God dang it. Political power is only 5% though. Yeah, we can't choose any of these guys. So we don't get any more political power, which kind of sucks. But that's interesting. National pop support every single day, get war support and division recovery rate. It won't give you that much here. But it seems like the benefits probably would be better here, in all honesty. I'm going to choose this guy first, because it's taking us a while to get there anyways. We're going to do that one for now. Division training, more division attack, which we'd use immediately, actually. Above all, there's a great foundation for the Japanese state, the relationship between the emperor and his subjects, organized in a kingly way. This foundation has made Japan superior to any other nation for more than a thousand years, and it shall continue to do so. Absolutely. What do we got here? There we go. Whatever. What do we got here? Marines? I mean, you know what? We're already using them. Yeah, why not? Good. That should actually give you a tiny bit of supply right now, too. I need you to like recover organization right now because they'll attack again eventually. Can you actually help out here? Maybe if you do that now. No. Okay. Whatever. We tried.
That's the Mansetsu Profits, a Southern Manchuria Railway Company, uh, formerly known as Mansetsu, has had a presence in Manchuria ever since the end of the Rosu Japanese War. Today, its operations span that region's width and form the heart of this growing industrial economy. Mansetsu provides more gross revenue for the Japanese government than the rest of its entire empire combined. So after this one, uh, development of the countryside, that'd be pretty good overall, but implementing uh, uh, Shintaisei. Throughout its existence, the Showa Kenkyukai has produced many plans to fix Japan's politics, economy, global position, and culture. Now that its benefactors are empowered to implement these plans, Japan will be transformed according to its ideas. Fantastic. Also, we are making these horses. You should come down here. So let's see how much strength they have. If, if it's a single division, it's worth it then. Up out here. You're gonna circle that division and kill them all that way. That's basically how you could do it. United States in disarray. Civil wars erupted in America, tearing apart the last shreds of unity in the Union. This presents with a chance to remove the American presence from the Central Pacific by occupying the island of Guam. There is very little the U.S. government can do to stop at this point. She's Guam. And claim even more. Heck yeah. Now, there's not much we can really do here. The rise of Datsun. For more than a decade now, American motor companies have completely dominated the Japanese markets. While domestic manufacturers have done well for themselves in recent years, the total combined production would be akin to a rounding error when it charted against that of the Big Three of Ford, GM, and Chrysler. Even the chaos at home, the Big Three's branches in Japan have kept soldering on, although it's become obvious to many that their output has begun to greatly suffer. Seeing it as a great opportunity to capture the potential lost market share, Nissan has released a new model of their Datsun branded cars known as a Type 16, despite uh, being almost identical to the previous Type 15. The timing of the release and the associated marketing push includes providing a free model of the IJA has already resulted in thousands of sales, including even some of the well-off Australian importers. While it's still too early to say this momentum it will keep up, especially once the American situation resolves itself, it seems likely this may be a fantastic year for Japanese business. So that's the case. How are the Philippines doing? Okay, I can't just find them. All right. Really want to hop out there. Mount here, huh? Path of Sonar's not bad. 37. Discharge throwers. Go, go, go ahead. Let's grab that. Ooh, this is a very opportunistic thing to do. Could you actually push into here? New system movement. To mobilize support for the regime and its reforms program, the new system movement has been organized. Led by Prince Colonel Fuminaro. The movement aims for a creation of a political institution that is capable of merging and binding people into an organic whole of the nation. Basically, a Japanese breed of corporatism with the emperor at its head. The movement's immediate goal is a combination of all uh, political per perspectives in one body, the imperial ruling system society. Oh no, you've got to get rid of this. This is the way we should go forward. Nice. Big business, huh? Development of the countryside. Out of sight, out of mind, no more. Now that the regional tycoons are part of our administration, we can venture to the hitherto unknown countryside and bring Yoko-san to the masses. Yeah, why not? 37, construction speed. Um, grand battle plans usually with Japan would usually go, um, but I'm probably gonna go with superior firepower probably. Infiltration, brigade size plus one, yeah. Recon. Supply consumption goes way down. Recon on a recon. That's a lot of recon. But here, you get recon anyways. So, I mean, it just makes sense to go superior firepower. I love superior firepower. It's so, it's so strong. I like being superior. Tenth International Congress, huh? No, this is one way to get rid of the enemy's divisions and whatnot, so. Political advisors. <sighs> Stability would be nice. Popular figurehead. Max factors and state and construction speed is very good, too. You know what? I'll grab this guy. It's barely going to go up. But it's start. You get more recovery rate in War Spark, too, so. That's pretty nice. Ball of Beijing, nice. Up out there.
And we need more fuel, so I'm going to import it from Venezuela. Good, so our ships get trained more. That'd be great. Come on, get in there. Nice. Mobilization. Ooh, party popularity stability modifier. The recent decades, thanks to the parliamentary bickering and allowing radical ideas to spread, have led Japanese society to a state of the divide. Aimed at promoting kinship through patriotic associations, education, and nationalizing the media to foster love for the nation instead of divide, which make great efforts in restructuring society to strengthen the intimate bottom of our people, uh, helping them remember what they are fighting for and working for. Ooh. Hako Ichiu. Japan's correct direction on the world stage has long been debated between military scholars and ideologues alike, but all agree. Is the world not better when it's under one roof? Oh, yeah, I want to go to war fast, so we gotta do that. Oh, you guys might be watching a good thing. No, we're not that strong enough yet. Oh, they're gone. Okay, they immediately left for some stupid reason. Oh, no, I see I see why where they left. That's not good for them. Not at all. Schnikes. They're actually being, like, being really smart, the AI is. Yeah, that sucks. We tried our best here. Philippine request support. Representatives. From the recently independent Philippines who have approached us as their president has gone up with a plan, or came up with a plan, uh, oh, give me some here, uh, to prevent economic crisis in the country. They plan to expand their armed forces, and thus increasing their industrial output and creating jobs for the people. They wish the Empire of Japan to help finance them on this task, which proved useful. Not only would it prevent them from destabilizing, but again, a friend in the region. I want to go to war with them. Like, New Order in East Asia. With the Russian not a threat across the Amur, and the Americans abroad in a civil war, the times could fulfill our destiny. China's weak, corrupt, and divided. Oh, look at that. And must be led in the modern age under the guidance of Japan. If the Chinese don't agree, then we shall simply have to teach them a harsh lesson about defiance. Conference in Beijing. <clears throat> we were super aware that our friends in Xinjiang are arranging a conference aiming to unite China under the Pengshan government. Although the wind's clearly blowing in its direction, Zhang Zulin believes that this is the best opportunity to pull the country together, as no one else can legitimately claim to fulfill the power vacuum left in the wake of the former Beijing collapse. Subsequently, we need to decide what to do in our role in the conference, and if any should be. Uh, while we cannot na naturally be represented by regular delegates, many of the foreign ministry have suggested that we should demand observer status. While we do not have any voting rights, some are arguing that our presence would support claims that Zhang Zulin is operating at her behest and thus undermine both the positions in China. Uh, the rest, however, seem to agree that our reasons to, to attend are legitimate, um, and that we shouldn't be held captive by the irrational fears of the Chinese nationalists after all. Should this conference be de again de developed in a direction contrary to Japanese interests, it would be the best to know firsthand, and perhaps to tip a balance of favor. Well, we'll see. Keep building stuff. We need guns. We need a lot of trucks. Wow. So we can get guns. Well, we can buy that for now. It's cheap. Nothing like buying Yemeni's guns. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Nice. New order in East Asia. Absolutely. Pressure Hawaii. Oh yeah, I want to, I definitely want to get there fast. Five races under the sun. Mintetsu projects. Nanshin Ron. For all strength, Japan has a key strategic disadvantage in its current dependency on foreign oil. In the pursuit of self-reliance and national security against ever-encroaching Western imperialism, surely it will be worth both wise and just to acquire these resources for ourselves and doing so wider sphere of security? The Japanese ambassador becomes high commissioner in Shanghai. Following the outbreak of the Second American Civil War, the legation states have to rely on American production and influence, but onto power vacuum. The legation council has had a vote on a new high commissioner to lead the mandate into the future, and it seems they have chosen the Japanese. The legation cities are now sundered, it's possible forever, for the idea of a pro-Western open door to China, and it's unknown if the cities will ever remain not only neutral in the years to come. Asians for Asia. Absolutely. Ooh, that's a lot. Six, seven, eight percent. Naval air agility. I like that one though, but still. And cheap of the Air Force, air accidents. Eventually it won't really matter. That's 15% is pretty good too. We actually got some really good guys here. But if we have to prepare for a war, you know. You do them that much? Honestly, no, not really. There you go. Welcome back. End of the fold. So I want the Marines to lead one, two, three. Go from here. You're gonna invade that. One, two. From here. There. One, two. 
and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. From here. And try that one. Venice is gone. Goodbye, Venice. An interesting discovery. Our agents operating in the legation cities have made a surprising discovery in Xinjiang, especially a Fengjiang government codebook acquired from the local Green Gang. The thugs apparently intended to sell the book to the highest bidder, but unfortunately, our brave operatives simply seized it by force. After some investigation, it was discovered that the codebook made its way onto the black market by way of a lavish party in Chengde, hosted by the Fengjiang's own general, Tang Yulin. It's almost certainly genuine and offers an even more confidence of looking at Feng Chun's communications than we already possess. As Feng Chun's fraternal ally, we ought to return the book, even if it serves only to demonstrate superiority, but we could also choose to keep it. Politely return it, huh? Keep it. Why would we give it to them? That makes no sense. Oh, this is right here. Or just do this anyways. Accomplish. Oh, that seems pretty good too. Ideological loyalty. Ooh. I always do overwhelming firepower. Ideological loyalty. Oh, that makes so much. That makes too much sense for us to use. Oh, state service military seems smart too. I love this one so much. It's so easy to use. But we get weekly manpower too. Darn it. It's going to cost us a lot to do what we want to do here. Jesus Christ. Uh, goodbye. So, with this in mind, we're looking pretty good, but this is just too much. Uh, infantry. I need artillery here too. And. And since I know what the combat widths have to be like, I need 25 here. So we need more army XP. Formation of the Moscow Accords. Very nice. Um, if we go down here, you lose 0 0.05 more political power. You get more fuel gain, though, which we definitely absolutely need. And you get more factory construction speed. So it's kind of a no-brainer. I want field hospitals as well. Yeah. Field usage goes down. Max speed, more range. We want with range earlier, so. There you go. Now she's in the run. Uh, bring the Philippines into the fold. Now the Americans are gone, we can send our gunboats to secure the archipelago for the co-prosperity sphere and bring stability to the islands. Of course, the Philippines might not see it that way, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Land reform, huh? Enable the, ennoble the national spirit. Oh. Hmm. I always get more attack. I like that. What do you got here? Fruits of the open door. While we may not have the competitive advantages of the America, free trade with China provided by the legation cities does provide our citizens with extra products. It's the Indian revolt, huh? Solinda. If they're independent, that, that might make it easier for us to get rid of the people and stuff like that. Um, setting the just normal infantry is a bad idea, but that's all we got right now. Get rid of the Western imperialists. Portugal's joining the Entente. That's nice. Don't care. They have no planes. Okay. Uh, shared modernization, despite the differences in doctrine and strategy between the proponents of the long and short war theories, both sides agree that s several fundamental points, such as the need for the armaments to secure early victories and territorial gains, to either force the enemy into potential peace negotiations or create a defensive line against the PFO and a heavy emphasis on aggression, viewing retreat as an unacceptable outcome. With these shared goals, the army will be able to produce modernization on a consistent line. Absolutely. Create the South Seas Territory. Every single island in the Pacific not held by us could be uh, act as a staging point to invade our home islands. The German Empire has no right to any of these islands, and so they are ripe for, for ours for the rightful taking. First, we'll formalize our claims to the area of the South Seas Territory. We can then use those claims to bring them into our empire, be that with the diplomacy or might of the Japanese Imperial Navy. Absolutely. 37 still. Uh, fuel. I gotta get, I gotta get more fuel, man. Uh, resource efficiency gate, because that helps out here too with slightly more aluminum. Slightly, of course. As soon as we can, we're gonna just launch the invasion. Alash Orda, construction, nice. Fuel. Just 
just in case. Stop training, stop training. Go home. Go home. What do you have here? Anything interesting? Not really. Cool. Alright, so let's see what the Philippines say as we do this one too. Next. The Philippines surrender. Oh, look at them. Seeing the might of our forces, the Philippines had no chance but to smit before the brave sons of the Empire. We could pop at them, or we could just straight up annex them. Oh, that is dastardly awesome. We immediately just eat them up. So we get three more rubber there. Um, anything else? A lot of chromium. That's fantastic. So that's the case. Occupied territories. We're on local police forces. We're going to go to civilian oversight. So um, that is great. That's now it's going to be much harder to garrison. But that's why we have to take over everybody. You know, we're thinking ahead of time, slightly, maybe. I don't know. It depends what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Fantastic. Maintenance, logistics. Yeah, I want logistics companies too. That's what I also want down spirit firepower. It's just really good for all that stuff. Can we buy any trucks? No, not ideal. So after this, we gain a claim on Singapore and a lot of the islands around here. Target is East Asia. We need more war support. Or world tension, really. We get claims. We all extend the uh, Pacific Security Zone. With American chaos, we can ill afford to ignore the opportunity presented. Proposals for creating a Pacific Security Zone that would extend a region of protection for the far flung Pacific positions have come forward and are under serious consideration. I pressure Hawaii. Now that the American position in the Pacific is weakened, we can make a move to annex the unrecognized nation of Hawaii and secure an impenetrable cordon around our empire in the Pacific Ocean. But if you enjoyed the first episode of us playing in Japan, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and we'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do as we extend the reach of our nation and the co-prosperity sphere. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.